surfboards to surfers are like jewelry to women. You just put that stuff away. And put it in a velvet <laughs> box. Put it in a velvet box and they cushion that stuff. Use it on special occasions. So, you know, we try to save those good boards for, for, for you know, important heats or, you know, where we know it's going to stick to our feet. And, you know, for us, that's gold. So let's go. I want to go see. I know you have a few different boards in your trunk. Let's go check them out. Yeah, we can go look at, uh, we got a whole bunch of stuff here. Okay, well, what do we got here? Well, th just in my spare time, <laughs> I'm just riding all sorts of things, you know. I got a, a bunch of boards people have made for me. Um, this is a uh, Tomo, who I've been, I've been doing some shaping with Tomo. I really like where he goes with boards. He's, he thinks out of the box. He's doing a lot of short kind of things and, and um, you know, he's not, he's not afraid to experiment with things that don't look traditional. So I, I like that idea because, you know, his thing's really about the function, like the idea and then how to make it, forget about the look of the board, you know. Why is he in fact with going a little shorter and stubbier? Um, I think it's about like the balance point in the board and the swing weight, you know. So when you have an extra four to six inches of board up in the front, you're going to get this extra weight. And that's just weight kind of getting in the way is his idea. So it's really about um, just the necessity of what it is to ride a wave. It's not about the aesthetics. It's not about that. So this is uh, basically this is basically the board I rode the other day. I rode this at Bells in the warm-up surf, and it felt pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Although um, the first second I was up, I was like, okay, I can feel the weight is different. I have to slow down and feel a couple turns before... I can know where I can push, you know. But when you're on something that's the same, same, same over and over again, and then you just change it a little bit, you feel, you really feel that difference. And um, I would say your sensitivity is way above most your typical pro surfer. Do you think that's why maybe most guys on tour are a little more reluctant to tr experiment, or, or what's the? Um, is this a challenge? I think just all the years of talking to different pros, a lot of guys aren't in, super into design. A guy makes their board. They ride it. They know they like it. They don't want to change too much. You know, they're not thinking, try this, try that. You know, of course, I think basically any guy on tour can jump on whatever and make it work. Right. But they're really particular about, you know, staying to a standard, building your confidence, knowing how it's going to work in all situations. Right. I think that's probably super important as a pro. You got to you got to know in any situation, any type of wave, how's that board going to react? And if you're switching around a lot, it's I get confused. It's you know, it's always tricky. I mean, you're never, I don't think anyone's ever going to find the perfect board, maybe for a certain condition, but ne not for everything. Right. I almost feel like sometimes you'll probably, you know, you, you have in the past. I mean, uh, people have definitely followed suit with uh, shorter equipment and, uh, you know, a little more volume forward. And you kind of broke the ground for that. Do you ever kind of sometimes want to hold those uh, discoveries? You know, a little secret to yourself? Yeah, I, th <laughs> I think I'm going it's to. An advantage. I think I'm going to as a, a, if I start just finding new things you know there are like when we first started doing the real rocker idea of boards in the early 90s or late 80s whatever um we had really narrow center we were riding under 18 inch everyone was on yeah. right, boards under 18 inches wide you probably were down 17 there. and a half i think yeah i got yeah. to 17 and an eighth at one point but you know i was just trying to understand boards i think i think we made a lot of mistakes um with board design there with the narrowness yeah uh, especially um i think we were far too narrow to create the curves we went to um, and they were long too i, I my short six was one. six three for me yeah i was six one yeah. i'm around five nines now for years so I, right. i've cut inches off that almost half a foot you know right third of a foot off my board yeah no my my level and in, in, in interest in uh, level of interest in surfboards is, is beyond just riding them obviously i mean i have a vested interest now in firewire um, they have a really streamlined production, and uh, I, I think sustainably, it's uh, you know the, the options there for sustainability are far greater than the average surfboard being made. You know, environmentally, surfboards are I would say the chemical makeup of boards is destructive. The foam blanks. The is the wood sustainable? Where's the resins being made from? Where's the cloth come from? You know, all those questions. And there's a lot of room for improvement in that as well. So that's something we're looking to do. Uh, you know, I've been with Channel Islands for 27 years, and uh, it's a it's a sort of I think I'm still in denial about it a little bit. Yeah. You know, that's really my family. Al Merrick's been like a father to me, and it's been a great relationship.
um, for me, and I talked to Al about it. He said it's been a great relationship for them and for himself. And um, you know, I I don't really foresee a time when I won't be riding boards from Channel Islands in some capacity. You know, I'm, I'd love to still make a board model with Al and right. Um, you know, maybe use this as an impetus to get back in the factory with Al mm -hmm. and work on something in particular. You know, millions of people care about whatever you do, and so now you got your you know. This is a new chapter with Firewire, a new chapter with Outer Known. You got all kinds of stuff going on, but you're still yeah. investing in a tour and you still want to compete. You know, how long do you foresee that being able to kind of pull that off because you're, you know, your energy is being dispersed all over the place? It is. Yeah, I've been really, you know, no excuses. I've put in 100% effort um, in, you know, when I've surfed heats the last couple of years, but I have been, especially in the last year, been very distracted by a lot of other stuff and just. I had many, many years where I had all my energy strictly going into trying to improve my surfing, win heats, and that was my laser focus. And, um, <clears throat> you know, last couple of years been a little bit more business and side things. And, and also, you know, just a, a, a slight lack of the same amount of interest, you know, it's not as exciting after all these years and stuff, you know. I mean, you, I don't know what you felt at the end of your career, but, you know, at some point you start kind of going, well, I've, okay, I've been here, I've done right. that, I've surfed against this guy. Right. You know, what's the new excitement in that? Um, and a big part of that is board design for me. Um, but also, you know, the business side of things, yeah, I, um, I would love to have an impact there if I can, you know, if clothes are made in a more responsible, sustainable way, mm -hmm. better materials. Um, there's a, a, a total environmental uh, approach to what we're trying to do mm -hmm. with that. And, and that goes into the surfboards as well. Um, so I'm, hey, look, I'm just trying to put my money where my mouth is, but I'm mm -hmm. not gonna um, try and preach to anybody about this or that's better. I understand that, you know, this industry was made a certain way and um, it's, it's a tough business to make clothes and, and have a sustainable business, a viable business mm -hmm. model. It's not easy to do. So. You got that stuff in your head when you're walking down the stairs at Bell's trying to win a heat. Yeah. <laughs> it's not easy. For sure. It's, you know, and, and yeah, there's a lot of things. But I, I, you know, long years and years ago, I used to, um, I had this conversation with someone where I was saying, I wish there was 10 of me because I have so many interests in, mm -hmm. in life, you know. I wish I could just spread out and do all these things. But, you know, you got this one life and try to do all the things that you can that interest you and, and um, you know, it place the right amount of importance on each one of those things to where they only take up that portion of time that they, right. they deserve. 